Hey there, this is Birch, and I want to talk about comic news sites. So, uh, why are they so bad? I think is <laughs> where I'm starting here. Um, so, first off, I think that news in general on the internet has seen better days. I mean, by by a long stretch. Um, unfortunately, the business model for news is really built around ad clicks and and quick attention. And uh, things like bounce rate and retention rate are not not as important if you're trying to meet a certain threshold of money. And for a lot of the smaller news sites, a lot of the game websites, a lot of the uh, comic and, and kind of entertainment news sites, they're not going to be CNN in terms of bringing in cash. I mean, there's a couple, you know, IGN has has flirted in that area, um, others with, with bigger money. But generally speaking, there's a certain threshold of money that you're going to get. And um, they're so that so they're they're more prone they're they're motivated to go for quick attention it's it's the it's funny because they were really derided uh, i want to say almost you know it's like 10 at least 10 years ago 15 years ago buzzfeed and and some of these sites that would do the you know 21 ways you might actually be a carrot and there those articles were mocked yet they still pulled in a lot of cash because you look at that title, you're like, well, this is absurd. You click on it, you go there, you're, you've got some ads and now you're, you know, you might click away again in like 10 seconds, but you know, the damage has been done. You, you fulfilled the business model. And so there's a, there's definitely a, a hook to ask a question in the, t- in the headline. Um, you won't believe what happens next. And it's like, well, maybe I'll believe, maybe I won't. Let me click on here and find out. And more often than not, you find nothing is there. So you just and then this the as the ad market has decreased and and struggled uh, from different times, you get uh, basically sites putting in more ads to kind of make up the difference. So you get these sites with like 40 ads on one page, and then we're experimenting with uh, video rolls and autoplay and, and redirect and just and it gets to be a mess. And so today you go to um, if you go to a lot of uh, comic news sites and you just have a, you know, onboard kind of spam malware uh, pop-up filter or count, uh, they're astronomically high. I, I mean, the um, leading cool, like, will will not only shut down your browser if you're on a phone. I mean, you can be on brand new iPhone X, uh, newest generation, um, plenty of memory. You bought the top of the line model. And you open up Leading Cool on that browser, and it will melt down your browser. I mean, it will, it will repeatedly reboot and then crash. And it, it that's not a good sign. That's that's a sign you've you've done the, you've done some bad things with ads. You have taken it too far. And that's but they're not. I mean, in, you know, I don't want to pick on them. Although I kind of want to pick on them because they're they're absolutely the worst offender. But. There, a lot of them are this way. CPR, tons of ads, tons of, uh, of content um, that is is definitely there to spam you into oblivion because that's their business model. That's how they're funding what they do and staying alive. Um, so they're going to keep doing that. But beyond just the ads and the other things, why is it that comic news sites can't provide just good legitimate news? There's a lot of things that people want and need. Um, One of the funniest ones is I'm always surprised by the customers who come in and they want to know what comes out this week. And they'll comment on, I wish there was a website that would just tell me what came out this week. And they'll say Newsarama and CBR and and Bleeding Cool. There's no like, here's what came out. And that's not a very exciting topic. It may not be a big ad generator, but it's one that their audience that people fans want they want a basic here's if you're going to the store and you're going to do your shopping here you go here's what you're going to be buying here's what's available for you that's that's people want that that's a need it doesn't exist on these sites Um, or it very infrequently will pop up like uh hey here's some comics coming out or another one is the solicitations for july now they all do this but newsarama will break it into a bunch of posts and they'll do kind of weird commentary on it. They're probably the best of, of handling this. Uh, Bleeding Cool do just do a massive, just copy paste in this, this huge thing that you can't get through because, you know, every, you know, every few scrolls down you hit 
um, you hit ads that crash the browser. So, you know, getting, if you ever try to read like July solicitations on bleeding cool, you are just in for some pain. Um, you, you can't get it done. And then CBR has kind of gone and started to go down this path as well. But the, the just getting news, there's a desire for news. There's a desire for people to just want to show up, um, say, oh, here's an artist who was hired here. Here's a storyline that's going there. That's what people are, people want that. They, they'll call it just straight news. Um, they, they don't necessarily want the weird socio-political commentary of, you know, this or that, or, or articles that are written so transparently biased to one side that you're just, you can become annoyed just reading it. I, I think there are a lot of topics. I think the whole, um, the way Meyer Wade and that lawsuit was, uh, was, has been portrayed with a lot of the news sites was done in such a, a unbalanced view <laughs> that you got people taking, you know, going, going against uh, Wade, not even purely because the, the news was so obnoxious about it. I mean, it, it, it turned people away because the, the writing was so abhorrent of, of how it was done. It was just so, it came across so slanted. Um, and that, that happens all the time with news where the, the socio commentary is, is not transparent. And, and nobody, again, nobody wants this for comic news. They want comic news. Um, and they don't want the other way either, by the way, they don't, you know, the sites that have kind of cropped up in, um, in opposition to these articles who are then writing them from the other angle, um, people, you know, yes, as I say, nobody wants this. People obviously want this. Uh, they like to live in an echo chamber. They like to have their opinions reflected back at them. Fine. But there is a, a healthy segment who just would like the facts, which is like to get, here is the facts. They don't want to hear um, uh, you know, about kind of the, the writer's opinion. And, and this is reflective of CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and, and the New York Times and all the rest. This is the complaint for them as well. It's like I, we, there's an editorial section. I'm happy to read the opinion in the editorial section, but also at least somewhere in there would like some just here are the facts. And we trust that you're a smart enough individual that you can figure it out for yourself. That's what is missing. And, and what is desperately needed. But uh, that it, 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 so comic news, I said, why are they so terrible? I, well, because nobody's doing that. Nobody's just giving us the facts. And in comics, at least, there are some hard facts out there. There are, here are the comics coming out this week. Here are the comics coming out in the future. Here are some tie-ins that are happening. Here's a writer artist change, artist change that's happening. Here is a storyline that's coming up. And here is an interview with a creator that's going to tell you what to expect in that storyline. There's a lot of just, just, you know, basic news. And that's why Newsarama probably comes out the, the best of these to a lot of people because they do, they will go into just fact mode from time to time, which is nice. But there's still, it, it I go back to uh, right now, comic properties and those IP, that IP is super popular. It's a billion dollar industry with movies and shows and everything else. There's money to be made by reporting on and, and uh, tackling this IP. Um, and you want to go for longevity. Going for a quick buck today is not maybe the smartest idea when, you know, the, the market could fall apart in the ad side of the world. And, you know, you're, you're having to, you know, triple your ads on your page again. So maybe you want to go for longevity by being a trusted source where people can go rely on you and, 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 and get value. But it's hard to bring value when you're playing games with opinions and things um, all the time. And the other thing that happens is, you know, comics is a very insular community and it is very uh, nepotistic. And you have clicks and you have uh, little groups that go on. And so you can usually, if you're clever about it, you can go to the comic news sites and you can tell which groups are influencing uh, which sites. And definitely with... Uh, with you know both leading cool and CBR, you can tell it's the same group of people that's really influencing a lot of the, the articles. You can tell where the leaks are coming from. So when you have leaks coming from one particular set of voices, one small group, and you also have news that is written always as editorials, 
it means that, you know, first of all, it's transparent. Anyone with a brain can figure out who's feeding you these leaks. But it also, it, it devalues the news because you're hearing it through multiple filters. You're hearing it through one creator who's giving their perspective through a filter into a writer for a comic site who's basically not paid and being paid in comics or, or maybe being paid but practically nothing. And then to you, the reader. So that's two levels of filtering before you get to just facts. And by that point, you know, you're not getting facts anymore. So it's, it's, it's a broken system. Unfortunately, if I was to tell people, you know, what we need is a good comic news site. So who's going to make one? Let's put one out. Let's raise some money. Let's, you know, make it happen. It would have to be a passion project because they're, they're, you, it's going to take a while to make money. And even then you're not going to make a ton of money. So the economics just, just aren't there unless you're willing to stick it out. And, and if you're willing to stick it out, you're probably more inclined to want to make that money somewhere else, somewhere where you're going to get a faster return. I mean, you can, you can slog through building a comic news site over eight years and, and build up some credibility and eventually get to a certain, you know, paycheck. Or you can, you know, go take a freelance job doing some coding and make that money and more in six months. So, you know, smart people are going to go where the money is. But we need better news sites. Uh, the the current the current system is is it's not serving. I mean, at the, at a basic level, it's not serving the need for uh, customers, for people going into the shop buying comics, wanting to be interested in comics. It's the, the need is not being met. And then on just a basic kind of entertainment, you know, reading standpoint, it, we need something that's that's not going to be so transparently biased as well. I don't know. What do you think? Are you happy with the way things are? Maybe you are. That's cool. Do you know a new site I don't know? Hey, that'd be even better. Send me a link. That would be great. I'll, I'll review it. I'll go to it. I, I want it. Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, thank you for listening. Hey, subscribe. Hit the bell for notification. Check to make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, all those things and, um, and talk to you soon.